Blessings to you all. I'm so happy to see you. Our wonderful pastors of the Resurrection Center are Pastors Jose and Melly Martinez. We're located in Indian Orchard, Springfield, Massachusetts. With their support, I head up the Bravehearted Men's Ministry, and it is my responsibility to give blessings to those who play a motherly role to our congregation. First of all, I give uh, blessings to Pastor Melly Martinez as we get ready to celebrate Mother's Day, our Apostle Lourdes as we get ready for Mother's Day as well with MLD, and um, this whole week is a big celebration for mothers, and I want to give you a raw, true story, a testimony not shared before, so I'm going to give that to you today. But first, today we give blessings to all those who play some sort of motherly role to our children who are our future generations. Uh, without mothers, foster mothers, grandmothers, aunts, guardians, and spiritual mothers, we would not have a future generation. Today I give testimony of a raw true story that demonstrates what mothers do for their children. And it is usually these types of stories that go unnoticed. We celebrate Mother's Day to give appreciation to the women in our lives who have guided us through the difficulties of life. They do it with love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is what they do. Those are the fruits of the Spirit as shown in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. The young girls of today will one day become the woman that God has called them to be with guidance, the fruits of the Spirit that flows through them with the proper nurturing and guidance of spiritual leaders can show that generation that they too can become the woman that they are called to be. Let me tell you more. In today's reflection, you'll get to hear the deep, raw story of what mothers do and how I became a witness to that. It's a story of what could almost be a tragedy to a remembrance of victory. And that's where we're at today. Let me tell you about my mom and dad. You see, they met on, of all days, Halloween. <laughs> yes, October 31 on Halloween in the year 1955. And where did they meet? No, it wasn't in a club. It wasn't in a restaurant. It wasn't in a supermarket. No, it wasn't even on the ground. It was in an airplane. So they met on Halloween in an airplane. Yep, it was an airplane. Three months and 11 days later, they were married. And they had abundant number of children and nearly 60 years of marriage. I'm one of nine children. So my parents passed quickly, not long ago, in 2014 and 2015, but I remember everything. Today, I take a moment of acknowledging not only the woman uh, God called my mother to be, but the kind of woman that God calls all mothers to be. You see, for me, my story is a, a little bit different. Um, as a twin, see, I have a twin sister, as a twin, uh, born in the year 1963 in an overnight emergency, I started my life with my twin sister uh, and, of course, my mother fighting for our lives. We were fighting for our lives because this was um, a set of circumstances that resulted in em an emergency. So after being rushed to the hospital, my mother was in the battle of her life and thoughts of difficult choices were made. It was a battle. It was an ugly battle with a doctor with no sleep in over 30 hours and my father helping him along. My mother fought to stay alive because there were two babies involved, not one. It was 525 in the morning on Saturday, August 10th. Game on. It was a good day. The battle was won because God had the upper hand. So every year, my twin sister and I celebrate our birthday as a ceremony of victory. Now you know why I'm a fighter. I was born a fighter. That's how my life began. 
So I learned to be a fighter because my mother had to fight for her life when, while my twin sister and I, we fought to survive. That was the very first lesson I learned, and it was my mother who taught me that. Yes, that was a good day. I learned a lot from my mother. My mother taught me to skate so that later I could play hockey with my brothers. You see, I chipped a tooth and I got stitches in my chin. So I guess I learned to play hockey. Isn't that what hockey's all about? Chipped teeth and stitches? Well, I got the skating part down. My mother took care of that. The hockey part, maybe not so much. So I do remember, of course, I got great support from my mom. So you see, my mom took me to the dentist for braces. I remember all of those detailed dentist appointments. So I would not have teeth that were perpendicular to the wall. Oh, and of course, there was that hockey incident too. Of course, there were other struggles along the way of life and mom was there to help me along. I want to share you just a brief testimony that shows the raw courage and fortitude that God calls women to be, especially when they're a mother. See, most people don't know that I started life with a learning disability. Yes, I had, yes, the, I had a learning disability. You see, I had to go through kindergarten twice. See, I didn't even pass kindergarten. So I remember being sent to a doctor for some sort of evaluation when I was about five years old. See, now think of this. I have a twin sister. Imagine what my childhood would have been like with a twin ahead of me all in school through kindergarten, elementary school, high school. Can you imagine what that would have been like? I didn't think of it then as a young child, but I would have be, I'll, I'll leave it this way. It would have been viewed as from others as well as myself as some sort of failure on my part. And that's something I probably would not have been able to shake, shake off. Okay, so um, fortunately I did graduate um, in high school uh, with my twin sister and I in the spring of 1982 on a rainy day in an outdoor ceremony. <laughs> So we both get to remember that same experience because we graduated at the same time. But imagine what kind of childhood that would have been like. You see, my parents fought for me. My mother was there to nurture me through that difficult time. By second grade, my twin sister and I were back in the same grade. I started slow, but when I got started, I started moving fast. So people who walk with me know, now know why I move very fast and make fast decisions. It's more than just being a business owner for so many years. Now you know why. Um, I also remember something very unique. Um, I remember when I was 12 years old, and I know distinctly, that it was definitely when I was 12 years old, my mother told me that I was going to own a business. She told me that when I was 12 years old. You see, I'm, I'm one of nine children. How, how did my mother know that? So I laughed. I thought it was funny when she said that. Well, 19 years later, when I launched my company in 1994, it was my mother who was doing the laughing. It was the kind of laugh that sounded like, I told you so. <laughs> she died before she saw my company go international, working closely with global clients. But I think she knew that was going to happen too. She always knew me, and that's what mothers do. They know all their children, and my mother had a lot of them. As for the child I was who went through kindergarten twice, well, he turned out okay. Master's degree in education, double certified in global studies, international speaker, happily married, international business owner since 1994. My mother knew right. She knew I could succeed. I know that my good fortune and well-being in life is because my mother prayed for me. She may not be with me now, but I carry her prayers forward with me into the future. What she had declared for me has come to pass and more is to come. I'm going to take a moment now just to give everyone the history of Mother's Day. What is Mother's Day? How did it all start? 
I'll just give you a little bit of a snippet of it. You see, the celebration of mothers and motherhood can be traced back to the ancient Greeks and Romans. That's how far back it goes. Uh, they held festivals in honor of their mother uh, through goddesses. Uh, but the clearest modern precedent for Mother's Day is the early Christian festival known as Mothering Sunday. The American incarnation of Mother's Day was created by Anna Jarvis in 1908, so not too long ago in terms of history. And uh, that uh, the uh, Mother's Day holiday, if you will, became an official U.S. holiday in 1914. The official Mother's Day holiday arose in the 1900s as a result of the efforts of Anna Jarvis, the daughter of Ann Reeves Jarvis, following her mother's 1905 death. Anna Jarvis conceived of Mother's Day as a day of honoring the sacrifices made for their children. Over time, the Mothering Sunday tradition shifted into a more secular holiday and children would present their mothers with flowers and other tokens of appreciation. This custom eventually faded into popularity before more merging with the American Mother's Day that we more commonly know that developed in the 1930s and 1940s. It was actually in on May 9th, 1914. So it was May 9th, 1914, President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed the second Sunday in May as Mother's Day as a public expression of love and reverence for the mothers of our country. Okay, so now I want to talk a little bit about how mom sets the pace in the home. How do moms set the pace in the home? Uh, we can take a look at uh, Proverbs 17:22, and it relates to joy in the home. For example, uh, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. In other words, if mama ain't happy, nobody happy. <laughs> but uh, mom always put joy in our home. Uh, the next one, um, busy with outside tasks. My mother was always involved, uh, especially with so many children. In Proverbs uh, 31, uh, verse 13 through 16. Proverbs 31, verse 13 through 16. The scripture reads, she seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. The next one is she's busy for inside good. Proverbs. 3127 Proverbs 3127 she looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness you've heard the old adage man works from sun to sun but a woman's work is never done um, the next one she shows acts of kindness Proverbs 3120 she opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy and the next one, speaking words of wisdom. All mothers do that. They speak words of wisdom. Proverbs 31, verse 26. She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Let's talk about now the impact on family. A mother's impact on family. Proverbs 31, verse 28 through 29. Verse 28. Her children rise up and call her blessed her husband also, and he praises her. Verse 29, many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Now, let me tell you a little bit more. A London editor submitted to Winston Churchill for his approval of a list of all those who had been Churchill's teachers. Churchill returned the list with this comment. You have omitted to mention the greatest of my teachers, my mother. That's Winston Churchill. So you can learn from your mother too. From Proverbs chapter one, verse eight through nine. Proverbs chapter one, verse eight through nine. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction. Do not forsake your mother's teaching. 
They will be a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. Now let's talk about some things our mothers have taught us. Uh, the first one, the first one, my mother taught me to appreciate a job well done. For example, she would say, if you're going to kill each other, do it outside. I just finished cleaning. See, I'm one of, one of so many kids. The second one, my mother taught me about religion. She said this, you better pray that will come out of the carpet. I'm laughing as I say this. You better pray that will come out of the carpet. Um, with a lot of kids, a lot of things were spilled. Um, uh, the next one is a good one. My mother taught me about time travel. Yeah, she, she would say, if you don't straighten up, I'm going to knock you into the middle of next week. <laughs> Number four, uh, my mother taught me about the science of osmosis. Yes, she taught me about the science of osmosis. Close your mouth and eat your supper. <laughs> uh, number five, my mother taught me about stamina. She taught me about stamina. And she said this, you'll sit there until all that spinach is gone. <laughs> number six, number six, my mother taught me about behavior modification. Uh, and that's when she said, stop acting like your father. Number seven, my mother taught me about anticipation. You just wait until we get home, she would say. And uh, then my mother taught me how to become an adult. Yeah. She says, if you don't eat your vegetables, you'll never grow up. <laughs> Number nine, my mother taught me wisdom. And she said, when you get to be my age, you'll understand. And number 10, my mother taught me about justice. One day you'll have kids and I hope they turn out just like you. <laughs> now I'm going to tell you about mother. It's a part of original 1915 lyrics. Remember mother first became an official holiday in uh, 1914. So in 1915, uh, the lyrics um, had this to say about the letters of mother, M-O-T-H-E-R. M is for the many things she gave me. O means that she's growing old, which means I better appreciate her. T is for the tears she shed to save me. H is for the heart of purest gold. E is for her eyes with love, light, shining. And R means right, and right shall always be. Put them all together, they spell mother. So whatever it is you appreciate your mother for, let her know. That would be the greatest gift. If you don't have a mother or she has passed on to heaven, let those around you Take, who take on that role supporting you, know that you love them. If you're a spiritual mother, then you know that you have many spiritual children who don't always know how to express their adoring appreciation for you. Just know that their love for you is true. If you are a mother, a foster mother, a grandmother, or a guardian, then bask in the celebration. You deserve it for all you do in bringing up our future generations to become the adults that God has called our children to be. Today, the men at the Bravehearted Ministry at the Resurrection Center give appreciation to all mothers, aunts, foster mothers, grandmothers, and spiritual mothers. We bless you all. My name is David Ewan, heading up the Bravehearted Ministry at the Resurrection Center. And this is the Resurrection Center.